Today we are going to learn how to add hair in Photoshop and trust me, 80% of the work is done if we find the right candidate or in other words, finding the right match for a transplant. As you can see in this case, the light is coming from the right hand side and it's a natural soft light. Similarly, I have found the candidate for transplant. Have a look at it. There's soft natural light and the light is coming from left. It doesn't matter. We can always flip it. So with the help of the lasso tool, just make a selection of the hair and a little bit of the surrounding areas. Press Ctrl or Command C and let's get back to our subject and press, you already know this, Ctrl or Command V. Now before we do any adjustments, let's not forget, press Ctrl or Command D, right click on it and then let's flip it horizontally because we need to match the light, right? Now let's match in the jawline from here and then you can move the anchor point right there and one quick trick here is that you can hold the Alt key or the Option key and click to move the anchor point right there and then you can rotate from that point and you can also make things larger or smaller from that point by holding the Alt key or the Option key and then making it larger or smaller. So I'm just going to rotate it a little bit more and now this part is matching so we can move the anchor point right there and control it from there. I think this looks perfect. Hit enter or return and then create a mask by clicking on the mask button right over there. Take the brush with black as the foreground color. Make sure you have selected a soft brown brush. Just erase the extras in the mask. So remember, black hides and white shows. Now I know what you're thinking. That part of the hair just looks a little crazy. So let's simply tuck it in. And to tuck it in, just simply select the layer and then go to filter, liquefy. With the forward warp tool, shortcut W, just nudge it slowly and gradually inside. Once it's all nicely tucked in, hit OK. I know, there's a gap right in here, not a big problem, let's just zoom in. Take the brush, white as the foreground color this time, make sure the mask is selected and just paint in these areas. Now erase the extras with black. Now if any of the hairline areas look as if they have been masked, no problem, just fine tune it. Now comes the matching part. Have a look at the hair. It is a little bit greenish and not that red. If you look at the original skin tone right over there, the skin tone of the subject is a little more pinkish than that of the new hair guy. So we need to remove the greens and add a little bit of reds. So hold the shift key, click on the mask to turn it back on. And now let's create one of our favorite adjustment layers. You guessed it, right? Curves. We definitely do want to limit the curves just to the hair. So click on this button. That way they will be limited. Let's reset it. First of all, let's go to the red channel by clicking on the drop down right there and choosing red and just take it up. With the help of the hand right there, you can just click and drag it up. That looks about right. And also it's too much green. So we're going to go to the green channel and just click and drag it down slightly. And also if you wish to add a little more yellowish tint to it, let's go to the blue channel. Blue is the opposite of yellow. Click and drag it down very slightly. Let's take a look at the before and after. Here's the before and here is the after. The hair is warm and nice and goes with the entire ambient lighting and color. Now finally it's time for us to do the hard work and that is going back to the mask, taking the brush black as the foreground color and just remove the extras of the background. Now you can use any of the hair selection techniques here. You can use just the brush. You can use blend modes. It's all up to you and it all depends upon the situations. There are lots of videos on hair selections linked up in the description. In this case, I'm just going to erase the extras and maybe paint some hair back in with the hairbrush. I brought back a little of the original background on the left hand side because it was matching with the current background. Now for the right hand side, let's take a hairbrush. By the way, you can download these hairbrushes using the link in the description and just open up Pix Imperfect hairbrushes and let's go with any one of these. I'm going with the intense. Simply take white adjust the brush size and just paint back in a few hair. Now keep in mind these hair brushes only work well with a pressure sensitive graphic tablet. If you're using a mouse, do watch this video on how to customize your own hairbrush. Now these hair masks that we created are very fine and have so much details, but there's a shallow depth of field, so we need to blur it. So select the blur tool. It should be in the smudge sharpen blur group. Strength about 20% is fine and just start painting over these areas. As a little blur makes it more realistic. On top of it, if you want, you can take a single hairbrush and create a layer at the top and then just take a sample and start painting single hair strands to make it even more realistic. And there you go, my friend, the hair transplant is simply done. So that's how to add hair in Photoshop. I hope this video helped you. And if it did, make sure to give us a like. And also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. 
ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other feature tips tricks or tutorials thank you so much for watching i'll see you in my next one till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating